We have uh, French 14 artists, uh, Millionaire Pimp. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, brother? I'm going to tell you real quick. I know the word pimp is amazing, but all my lawyers say that I should stop using that word, just as a disclaimer. <laughs> They're knocking on my doors, maybe even like very, very soon. Pimp is actually just a word. It's, it's for entertainment purposes. I just have to put that disclaimer for my lawyers. It's just for entertainment purposes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, brother? So my name is Prince Fortunatos. I run a model agency. You know, I'm an athlete as well. I've won the Austin Championships, the National Championships, many, many times. That's how I got to go to America. I had a free ride scholarship. And that's when it all started. I was really interested in how to start making a lot of money. I really dove deep into that. I started a business. And it's all history from there, basically. And now as well, I'm a business coach, so I help people to set up their online business so they can make a lot of money. That's what we all want, a lot of money. You, you did go to college, right? Why, why? Yeah, I actually went to college. I know it's a surprise, but I went to college. Why, why did he do that? A lot of, a lot of other high-value men you yeah. know, say that co college, is a, college is a waste of time and a waste of money. Why, why, did he pursue, why did he pursue that? That's a very interesting question. Well, there's a lot of things. I think if you want to go to college, bro, that's what I always give as an advice. If you want to go to college, it needs to be an ROI. A lot of people nowadays, and even in college, I would just ask people, hey, what do you study? What do you do? And, you know, there'll be people and even uh, usually the chicks like, oh, psychology. And I'm like, yup, that's low ROI. That's fucking stupid. Because how are you going to put on loans and loans and loans, spend a lot of money, borrow a lot of money to pay for an education just so you can basically learn a degree that you could learn on, online, reading books, just read books on psychology. You would know more about psychology than learning from these professors. And it's hilarious because these professors tend to have psychological issues themselves. And it's just low ROI. If you want to go to college, you should be doing stuff like engineering, math, which is what I did, information systems, which is what I did as well, so with computer science, you know, IT, software, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, those are things, yeah, you go to college and you come out and you can actually make money and get an ROI on that. But anything else, history, one of the worst is business as well, because all these business professors, bro, I know more about business probably than any professor at my school now. I know about taxes. I know about accounting. I know about management. I know about leadership. I know about outsourcing. These are all things you learn literally if you do business yourself. And all these people that you're learning from, they don't teach, they can't teach about business because they don't run a business themselves. So yeah, if you want to go to college, have it be an ROI. In my case, you know, I was there as an athlete. I was going there basically for free. And at the same time, it was a new culture, something new to learn. I was pursuing a degree that could actually make me money outside of school. So for me, it was an obvious choice kind of. And my parents wanted me to do it. So I wanted to make my parents proud. I will have to say that. But yeah, these are the only circumstances I would go to college for. If it, it, You have to plan it out. It has to be an R1. It's, it's, it's talk about your, your childhood. What did, did you have a good upbringing coming up? Because look, look, you're, you're a freaking millionaire now, right? Did, were you, did you always have the mindset of, oh, I need like to make more money? Absolutely. Actually, I believe the way my parents raised me was borderline genius. And I give them more props now. Also, that I'm older. I don't understand more where they're coming from. You know, my father, he was born in Nigeria. He was actually born in the war. He was telling me horror stories, literally, where he couldn't eat. They wouldn't have food to eat. His father died at 13. And it was a big, big struggle. And he came to Austria, studied architecture, and then, you know, started a family with my mother. And I have to say, my upbringing, I was never actually broke. But I'll tell you why I was genius. Because my parents actually made me feel broke. That's crazy part. <laughs> I, I thought always that we were like super broke because I'd see the kids 
getting all these soup, like always the newest PlayStation, always the newest Game Boy. But my parents were kind of frugal with me. They wouldn't just let, they would give me a Game Boy when I, like I had Game Boys, I had a Wii, I had all that. But it always felt like my parents were like taking a huge chunk of money. Also, we're, you know, in total five siblings. So for some reason in my mind, I always thought we didn't have a lot of money. What I would describe it as actually, I would say we were lower middle class. And then I would always compare myself to like the middle class and the rich kids in my school. And also, you know, I'm black as well. And just from a social dynamic, people maybe in school, they would also always assume, oh yeah, he's the black kid. You know, they don't have so much money. And that really motivated me. I just wanted to buy everything I wanted to buy. Like that, it's just, I wanted to have the newest shoes. I wanted to have the newest drip. I wanted to have the newest phones. I didn't want to have to go to my parents, you know, ask them like, hey, I want like the newest iPhone. And they were like, ah, no, nah, it's too expensive. We can't do that, et cetera. Looking back, they could have probably easily gave it to me, but they didn't because they were just frugal. They were good with money. They were just, you know, very responsible. That's how I would say it. I wasn't like those rich kids or these middle class kids. They just boom, okay, new iPhone. And that just pissed me off. And that's what really, really motivated me into earning as much money as I can. I think that's really it. Well, I'm the same way. You know, I'm, I'm 14 right now. I turned 15 in six days. Oh, shit, you're 14? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And I started making money when I was 13. So uh -huh. I, I, I can relate to you, too. So I always yeah. wanted the new stuff. Yeah, so... <laughs> exactly. No, that, and, and you always need something that will push you. And the reason, like, uh, I want to emphasize that I really like the way my parents did that is I'm going to do the same with my children. Let's say, you know, I'm rich, you know, and I have kids. So I never want to raise my kids in a rich way. They have to earn what they want to get. They can get all the necessities. They can have a roof over their head. And I'm very thankful I didn't have to struggle with that part. I always had a roof over my head. I always had food to eat. I was never hungry. And those are all the necessities you need, though. Everything else, if you want extra shit, you got to earn that. You, you yeah, absolutely yeah. Have to earn that. I think it's terrible if your parents are just always giving you the newest iPhone. Imagine right now in your shoes, you just went up to your parents. You're like, okay. I saw this thing on TV, whatever it is, the newest shoes, the newest drip, right? I want that. That whips off credit card, boom, buys it for you, you have it. Where's going to be your fucking drive to get it? If your parents are always coming in to save you, you should actually always be like, nah, I need to work to get that. And I think that's the biggest thing, really. That's the most important thing, the earning part. So I'm going to do that with my children as well. Yeah, so I'm the same way too. Like I, I asked my parents for like, oh, can, can you like give me some money like to go out with my friends, right? And they just tell me no. Like you, you, you've been able to make money. Like go, go out there and go make money. Go make more money if you if you want to go. <laughs> yep. But yeah, yep. when did you start making your first money? My first money. So so <laughs> I started. I actually started reselling shoes. That's what I started with. I would resell Yeezys. I would resell all these bullshit as designer shoes. I would get them cheap, cheaply online or cheaper than whatever the current price was or even the same price and just like upsell it higher on eBay. And for anyone, I actually recommend either get a job or get some type of, do, some, do something where you need to sell something. That's what I advise people to start with. Because that's going to put you into the selling mindset. And the selling mindset is all you need to win. Because life is really only about two things if you want to make money. It's marketing and it's sales. Those are the two things. And I'll start with reselling shoes. I would just resell shoes. It wasn't even that much money, bro. I was 16. I would get Yeezys, resell them for $300 higher. Take the 300s. Spend it on food. Spend it on clothing. I was always big on spending on clothing. I would like... I would blow all my money on style. 
that's the time for me. That was always a big thing for me. For the, I had a best friend back then, and I learned a lot from him. And he was all about image, style, and looking the freshest. That's a very big... I think every, every young kid should try to do that. Because all these kids nowadays, they dress like fucking brokies. They dress, dress like losers. I think, like, there's, like, this thing going on. We have, like, this casual style where it's, like, you just dress... You're kind of dressing down. It's, like, a new thing. And I was never like that. But, yeah, that's how I, I first started making money. And then... I it was actually in 2020. That was also a moment of time for me when I was like, yo, I just need to start making money. I had actually listened. You no, know, I read this blog about this guy, and he was essentially saying, if you want to earn money, you need to fucking stop being a consumer and start becoming a producer. 99% of the population is consuming. You need to become a producer. Consuming means you're consuming content, you're scrolling IG stories all the time, you're scrolling on TikTok, you're consuming TikTok content, you're buying No, You need to be the person who's producing content. You need to be the person who's selling shit. So that turned the light bulb on in my head. And I just I actually started with drop shipping. That was a total failure because crazy. I lost all my money. I actually made 18 grand. I had like money coming in. That was my first real money where it's like coming in. I was like, oh shit, it's money coming in. And then it was during the Trump Biden election. They banned all my Facebook ad accounts. I got fucked, lost all my money. I was down. That was actually, and I had a friend, he did the same thing and he widely succeeded. He, I think he's, you know, he's very rich now. I don't talk to him anymore. I, I thought I would never make it. But then I started dabbling into crypto a little bit. I made a lot of money with crypto. I was in my college dorm. I made like 300 grand in two months. And then I started my model agency. And that was the actual first business that I started that became super profitable. So that's kind of my story how I made money, basically. When you started your job shipping, did, were you, did you have a, a normal job at the time? No, I never had a job, bro. Okay. I had one job, one summer job. I made $400 and I was like, fuck that shit. Bro, I, I, I no, I'm I bro, it was a pride thing for me. I'm not gonna have a job. Fuck that shit. I, I will recommend people to actually get a job if you have zero money because at least you need to get something. But bro, I was made to get a job. If you're 24 or 20, if you're like 20, 21, and you're literally doing nothing with your life, not even in college, you know, at, being an athlete was a job for me. I was already I was an athlete that paid for my entire school. So that was already a job I was doing. But if you're doing literally nothing, yeah, get a job. But I never wanted to have a job, period. That was a pride thing for me. I never, ever had a long-term job ever in my life. Fuck that shit. Yeah, so um, let's, some of the boys from the Brotherhood uh, wanted me to ask you some questions. Uh -huh. You want to get into it? Sure. sure. Are you religious? And if so, how do you combine pickup and, and religion? And also, this is going to go into a, a second question as well. Um, what do you think is the, what religion best fits fits you? Interesting. Okay, so the, wait, so what's the first question? The first question is, I am, if I'm religious? If you're religious, if so, how do you combine pickup and, and religion? Okay, I mean, God said, be fruitful and multiply, right? If you're bad with bitches, you're going <laughs> well. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You think God put you on this earth to be a fucking incel? To be a no <laughs> pussy man that you can't get any fucking bitch? No, you're a loser. And I see this with a lot of religious people. They'll pretend like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm godly. I mean, I'm a Christian. But in real life, you just cannot get pussy. And look, there is a difference between not being able to get pussy and choosing not to go after pussy. Those are two different completely things. But yeah, I am religious. I'm actually Christian. But bro, you ha as a man, you have to be able to get your dick wet. Absolutely. If you're not, if you do not have that capability, how do you want to follow God's command and be fruitful and multiply? How right. do you want to do yeah. that? <laughs> be fruitful yes. and multiply. I'm trying to multiply myself a lot, bro. I'm trying to multiply, multiply myself a lot. You should too, bro. 
you know. I, so, I am. I, I, I want kids too. <laughs> may become a great man and multiply. That's what God wants. Absolutely. What challenges did you face that really helped you decide to make more make more money? What what challenges did I face to to help me decide to make more money? Yes. That's a good question. The main challenge, like I said, is I couldn't afford the stuff that I wanted to buy. And I, one thing as well, I hated asking my parents for money. I just hated that. It's just a, a, a bad feeling because I, I felt like a, 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 a parasite. I'm just going up to my mom. I'm like, hey, I want one grand for a new iPhone. And she just get, I just, this whole concept of like, I'm, I'm, as a man, you should have the ability to get shit for yourself. That's a big thing that I see in this society, especially with young kids. They want shit given to them. They don't want to earn the shit. There, there is pride in earning something and knowing that you earned it. There is pride in going to the gym, lifting the weights, working out as hard as you can, sweating, being in pain. And then later, two months, three months later, you see a beautifully sculpted body. You know, you have these people, they will want to take the pills. I was listening to the radio when I was in the USA. They're advertising this weight loss pill. People want it easy nowadays. Just pop a weight loss pill and then you're good to go. You have people doing surgery for a six pack. All this bullshit. No, you have to earn what you want. And that's how you actually feel content about yourself. A lot of people ask me, what, bro, why are you so confident? How you get so confident, Prince. You have to earn shit. If you earn shit, you're always going to feel more confident. So yeah, I had challenges in the sense that I just, if, I mean, look, let's say I want to buy the newest camera because I was super into style and it cost me $800. I hated asking my parents for money. I just wanted to earn that money myself. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be able to go to the club spend money on a table, get bitches. I didn't like, bro, what am I going to do? Ask my mom, hey, mom, I want money to spend on a table for bitches. <laughs> Just fucking slap my ass. But that's going to whip up the belt. <laughs> I'll be running around the house as a little kid, bro. Nah, fuck that shit. I, I'm getting the money myself. So yeah, that was the main challenge, really. Yeah, yeah you, was you keep other people having a lot of money too. You, you keep bringing up your parents, um, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but do, do your parents support you in uh, the way the way you've been making money through? I believe it is OnlyFans management. Management. Yeah, I mean it's not only only OnlyFans is part like the mo the models. Yeah, they do have OnlyFans sometimes, but it's not just that. It's more. That's why I said the word pimp. It's not. It's for entertainment persons, and even I'll even I'll say it because it sounds funny. You know, I'll be like, oh yeah, pimping. You know, you know, um, what do you do, pimping? But it's not really just that. It's more the marketing aspect around it. So let's say I have a model. She's an IG model, right? She's like, hey, you know, can you help me get more followers on IG? I'll do that. I can help her get more followers. I can sh show her what content to post, how to do it, how to brand herself. And then maybe, you know, she has an OnlyFans and that makes her more money. But then I'll be like, hey, I also want a cut of that. So that's how I work. And my parents know that as well. And they do support me. Yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, in the beginning, of course, they wanted me, bro, they, they want me to do my master's, to get a doctor's degree. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? No, I'm doing that. Yo, my grandma, she was like, yo, you with your little business thingy, why don't you fucking just settle down, do your master's and 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 call the day? I'm like, grandma, what the fuck are you talking about? You, you fucking stupid or something? Like, how am I going to stop making 100K a month just to fucking go back and do my master's? Do I look retarded to you? He's like, yeah, okay, I understand. But it's just a typical thing. Your parents are always going to... You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And that is, even with grandparents a lot of times, they'll want to go a certain route. And as a young man, you'll have to, first of all, be confident in yourself that you can achieve what you... You have to back up what you say you're going to do. If you... You know, people ask me, like, hey, should I drop out of college? You don't necessarily just have to drop out of college, but at least you have to have a plan first. Have a plan and know what you want to achieve and be the person who can back up his word. And at some point, your parents are going to see that and then obviously they're going to support you because, look, if I retire my mom and I give my mom money, right, 
I mean, is she still not going to support it? So yeah. at the end of the day, just do what you need to do. Even if your family is against it, sometimes it'll happen. And it might feel like shit. You might feel bad because you're like, yo, the people that's closest to me are not supporting me. But they will eventually, if you back up your words, I promise you. What, what are what are the best ways to deliver value? You put on a story that the best way, the four ways are time, money, energy, and attention. Um, oh yeah. Can you please can you please expand on those? Wait, you, you mean in context of what? You mean in context of girls? Just deliver value to to somebody in general. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I remember exactly what you mean. So, yeah, that's one big way I became successful by being able to deliver value to the correct people and then me, frankly, benefiting off that, right? Because you have to benefit. If you're close to people, to high value people, you indirectly start benefiting. Even if it's just they tell you something, some idea that you didn't think of, you know? Everything I did in my life is great. I got that idea from someone, from people who are further who were further ahead than I was. And yes, time, money, energy, and attention. Right. So how are the ways you can deliver value to a high value person? Right. Let's say you have a very good skill. And I say that because people sometimes think their time is valuable, but bro, your time is not valuable, especially to a high value man. For example, you might even think, oh, yeah, let me work for him for free, bro. He's going to lose more money trying to teach you how to do shit than he would paying someone for money and him doing the job correctly or her. So you need to have at least a skill that's valuable because now if you offer that skill for free, now you're basically offering free time. And that's something also what I did. Like anything I'm good at that I can do very competently, I went up, I'm like, yo bro, I'll do it, I'll do it for free for you. Because how, then it's an offer they can't refuse. Why would they say no? And now I'm at least closer to them. I've, I've done things for high value people completely for free. I never saw the money for it, but I did it for a purpose because I wanted to be close to these people. And it always paid off. It always paid off. So you have to have a skill. You have to have a skill. So number two, which is actually my favorite, and I recommend people just to do that, Rob, because that's the easiest. Just pay money. You have to pay money to be in those rooms, right? Even for me, let's say a young kid came up to me, let's say 20 years old. He's like, hey, bro, I know your time you know, is valuable. I know you're super busy. Bro, I'm just going to give you money. Here, here's cash. I just want to be able to talk to you. You think I'm going to say no? Of course I'm not going to say no. You know, yeah, yeah. Because he's paying for it. And that's a brutal fact because time is money and money is, and, and time is valuable. So if you can just off, and I've done it myself too. I least should go up to a high value person that I really respect. I'm like, hey, boom, okay, let me get your coach. Just so I can be closer to him. Just so I can talk to him on a more regular basis and get infos, right? Now- And, and I, can, I can add on to that, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. So- Sure. I, I'm a car photographer and I'm also, a, I used to run a short form video editing agency. So yeah. it's, it's the car photography, right? So I, my next door neighbor is his uncle, he had a 2024 Ferrari, no, McLaren, my bad, 2024 McLaren. It was yesterday, actually. No, two mm -hmm. days ago. <laughs> okay. Hold on, we're, we're running out of time right here. He says, we can we can make a new Zoom. Yeah, so, we can. We started. So I went up to him with my camera, this one, and like motioning to lower down the window because he was in the car, right? And I said, hey, bro, um, I'm a car photographer. You think uh, I can take you uh, some pictures for free? Was he surprised? He was like, oh shit, this guy do, wanna, wants to do that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically. And mm -hmm. we legit went down the street because we went down the street and I took some pictures for him and I sent it to him. And he later said that he's going to buy a, a new spoiler for his for his car and he's going to want to pay me for, for some pictures soon. So, yeah. You know, what, I, you know what you call that? There's a term for that. It's called free trial. Okay. Free trial. 
literally just give people a free trial. People always have this big ego. They're like, oh yeah, no. No, just give people a free trial of your honest and good work. And, and uh, you're surprised at how many people actually want to do it, first of all. And kind of, they, they're going to kind of owe you something back, right? That might even be the reason why some people say no, but at the end of the day, maybe they want to owe you something back because, yeah, they're like, yo, this kid did an amazing job. You know, I'm going to give him an opportunity. I'm going to give him a chance. So you can absolutely give people a free trial. That's a genius move that you did, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've always told my parents, like, to be able to get value from someone, you have to give value. So, and yeah. they, they never really understood that until the the McLaren the story I had. Bro, you know what I love about what you're doing is you're starting early. That's the main thing That's that you cannot buy back, which is time. Like even me, bro, I have, I'm like, yo, I'm already going to be turning 25. I need to do certain things in the time I've, I've given. I have given from God. So time is the most valuable thing for sure, bro. The reason I want to explain that is so that people can understand how they can give value and get value because that was a big thing for me. So we talked about time and we talked about money. The next thing is attention. So attention is also a big thing that a lot of people don't, don't really talk about. Because if you give attention and praise to the correct people, they'll love you for it, bro. They'll want to talk to you. A lot of people, bro, have a huge ego. Huge. It happens to me just sometimes. But sometimes I'll have people talking to me. And of course, every human is equal, blah, blah. But we're talking about in objective measures. If I am objectively better than someone, then he shouldn't be talking more than me. Same for me. If I'm in a room with a billionaire, you know, and I've been in rooms with people of worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Bro, do you think I'm the one talking all the time? No, I'm the one giving attention. I'm the one saying, oh shit. I'm the one, you know, talking about him, talking about his accomplishments, talking about like what he thinks, how he views the world. Like I'm giving him attention and praise. Like he looks at me, he's like, oh shit, this kid is, he loves me. And that's the feeling I give people. And that was a big thing, especially... Because you'll have successful people, but they're not famous, right? And they don't get recognition as such, right? But if you can give them that recognition, bro, that is valuable to them because it just feels good. I was yeah. in a room some, uh, one day and I was talking to this guy. He was making a lot of money, like millions a month. And he was just talking about me uh, to me, explaining me how he does his systems. And I was just like, yo, bro, that's genius. That's so, and I'm, I genuinely mean it as well because I was... You know, I was like, wow, that's amazing. I was telling me, yo, bro, that's fucking genius. That's smart. Oh, shit, you do it that way. That's incredible. I should adopt it as well. And you know what he said? He literally told me, finally, someone who gives me recognition. Finally, some recognition. No, bro, because it's true. A lot of people have big egos and they don't want to They don't want to look like they're giving someone too much or fawning over them. I, bro, if you're in a room with someone who's objectively better you, just shut the fuck up. Listen to whatever he says. And just, just say, cool, that's amazing. Yes, that's how you're going to win friends as well. And then the last thing, of course, is energy. Now, energy is a vague term, obviously, but it kind of ties in also with the attention and uh, time part. Just you have to show dedication as well. Let's say you're in someone's coaching and you're just showing a lot of energy. You're completing tasks very well, very fast. You know, you just, you're dedicating time. That's also energy you can give someone. Anytime I talk with someone who gives me advice, I will actually put that advice to use extremely fast. And I'll be like, hey, bro, look, I did this and it actually worked. And that can be like, oh, shit. <laughs> what if the people actually did what I advised him to do? He's putting in energy. Bro, you won't believe the amount of people, you know, I'll give advice to. And they half ass it. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. But the ones who don't half ass it, I remember that. I'm like, yo, bro, that guy's a fucking G. And that and that's valuable to me because first of all, I can tell others, hey, look what he did. He took my advice, you know, very successful. And whenever he asks me questions, I want to give him more advice because I see he's putting an energy into it. So those are the four main ways you can use to 
give someone value, especially high value people views, all four. Yeah, you, you'll be able to talk to high value people and they actually take you serious. They won't think you're a fucking dickhead. Yeah. And and I did the same thing with, with the energy part with, with Logan. Um, yeah. We were in a we're in a we were in one of the weekly seminars and mm -hmm. I asked Logan, like, what how how can I do more clients for, for my car photography business? And yeah. he said, You gotta give it, you gotta give them, you gotta go take pictures for them for free. And yep. obviously he expanded it a little bit more. I'm just dumbing it down. And I told him the exact story of the, the McLaren story. And he, he was like crazy. He was like, that, that's crazy, bro. Like, thank you. Like, I'm, yep. glad, I'm, glad it, I'm glad it worked, you know? So yeah. that Absolute, does work too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, and that's value too. You won't believe how valuable that is because he'll remember you now. He'll remember you as the guy who's dedicated. And that's well, all I, people want. That's all people want. Absolutely. I've been working with Logan, so he kind he kind of does know me, but you see, yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I mean. And and well, I I first got in contact with them because um, I I had my short form video editing agency, and mm -hmm. I was like, hey, bro, look, he put on his story that he needed an editor, so I I swiped up and I was saying, I'll I'll edit you some videos for free, and he was like, oh, okay, and then so I edited videos for free. And he really liked him, and then he started paying me. So that's how I got in. So I got paid with him. So exactly, yeah. exactly. You have to put in and, and and never give up. You know, and even even if that means being a little persistence. Like sometimes, I'll tell you these guys as well. But don't abuse this shit. Like I don't want people just necessarily like trying to now use my tactics against me. But okay, what I mean is, people sometimes also want to see your persistence, right? Let's say you want something from someone, a job opportunity. He says no. Be a little persistent. He wants to see if you're actually about it. Like find out ways you can maybe still get him to say yes. Offer him different deals. Be like, okay, I can this, do this for you. Oh, okay, you don't need that. But boom, I can do this for you. You know? Or there's, you know, let me help you for free. Hey, look what I just did for you. Just actually show effort and energy. And people will, they'll take you serious for it. They'll take you serious for it, for sure. Okay, let, let's, start with the first, let's start with the first one, if I read books. Okay. Yes, I do read books. And it's been made popular recently that you should be reading books. I actually totally disagree with that. You should be reading books because books are actually a form of mentoring. You don't think that if you read a book by someone who has had amazing results amazing results in the domain that you want to have results in. And you read a book where he wrote down all of his ideas, all the things he thought about, all the explanations why he thinks he had success with it. You don't think if you spend, let's say, five hours to read the book that you'd be smarter than before? So absolutely you would. Now, there's two things, though. There's a difference between information and knowledge. And that's, I think, that's why books got a bad rep, because you'll always have the retards who fuck everything up. You'll have the retards to read a book close the book, put it back on the shelf and just do literally nothing. Yeah, you're fucking stupid because that's not knowledge. What you need to do is you need to take that information and use it, learn it, apply it. Because now when you do that, it turns into knowledge. Now you're knowledgeable about a subject. You can actually do something with it. So you should actually absolutely read books and you shouldn't be, you know, anal about it, stupid about it. It's not about who can read the most books. Literally, just read maybe 30 pages a day of books that are actually great books. Think and Grow Rich. I love Alex from Moses' books. Straight mm -hmm. to the point, business, 100 million offers, 100 million leads. I love this book called The Charisma Myth. That really talks about how you can build more charisma. I really love the book. It gave me a lot of insights. I, I love this book. It's by Scott Adams. I forgot what exactly it's called, but you'll see it. It's, uh, it's called, yeah, Win Bigly or something like that. And it explains how Trump won the 2016 election and how Trump is a genius when it comes to psychology. But anytime you have a subject that you want to be more knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about, and there's someone in that field who is a genius about it, yeah, of course, read his books. It's gonna make you smarter, and it's gonna learn. You're gonna learn how to navigate your space better. I, I, I think you should read books for sure.
Well, which book has changed your life the like the, for the most the most? Well, there isn't a book per se that has changed. If anything, maybe I would say the charisma myth, because I believe one of the most important things you need as a man, and even as a female, you need to be likable. You need to have charisma. A lot of people have zero charisma. And they don't even believe you can build charisma. You can absolutely build charisma. You can become a more likable person. And that book, when I read it, literally, I started doing what it says. And it's not even the, what, the great thing I like about the book. It actually explains that charisma is not just a technique. It's kind of who you are and what you feel inside and how you should produce that inside of yourself. And yeah, absolutely. That book, it changed my life, I would say, because with any guy that I met or meet or that I've built a great connection with, I've used that information for sure. Here we got another one. How does a man focus and free himself from FOMO, fear of missing out, and focus on one business model? I guess I guess the question is, how, how does he, like, not get, just this. like, like, have the fear of missing out on, like, other business opportunities? If, if okay. one, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> So I forgot who exactly said that, but there is a certain uh, curve or pattern when it comes to success, a certain pattern. So first, you usually have informed optimism. You read about a business and like, oh, shit, I can make a bunch of money with it. Oh, my God, I'm going to be rich. But then, you know, you hit the peak and you kind of see it's a little bit more difficult than you thought, right? And now your optimism starts going a little bit down. I forgot the exact stages, but I can explain them. Now okay. it's more into informed pessimism because now you read more about it. You actually realize, oh, shit, I actually have to put in work. And now your retard brain steps in and it's like, oh, yeah, we don't want to work. You know, but you have to work. You have to put in work. And then you're like, ah, shit, it's way harder than I thought. And that's when most people actually step out. It's hilarious. Most people at that point they'll quit because now they think the other side is greener. They'll try a new business. They'll have formal for another thing. But what it actually is, it's not that the grass is greener on the other side. It's greener when you water it. But now what happens is when you have informed peasantism, now you keep going, you keep working, you work, 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 work every day. You don't give up. And now you kind of start seeing a little bit of success. You're like, oh shit, I started figuring this shit out. So now the curve goes back up and now you keep going and now you're like, oh shit, I can actually make money with this. I figured this out, right? And now you become optimistic again and you start believing, you start seeing how you can make a lot of money with this. But that's where most people give up. And it's, it's a curve with everything. Let's say you're going to the gym. Like, oh shit, I'm going to build a, I'm going to build a great body. I'm going to look like a Greek god. You go in and you actually realize, oh, shit, it's actually hard work. I need to work out. I need to fucking sleep well, track my food. You know, I need to do the correct exercises, etc. So now you start, ah, shit, and it's taking longer than I thought. You know, now you don't have as much optimism. But then you keep going and you keep going, you keep going. And then maybe a month later, one half months later, you start seeing a little muscle. It's like, oh, shit, I'm getting a six pack. So now you're like, okay, this actually works. And keep going, keep going, keep going. And now... One day you look at your body, you're like, oh shit, I'm actually building muscle. I'm filling out the shirt. You know, my biceps is getting bigger. You know, my shoulders are getting broader. Oh shit. You know, the bitch has been looking at me. Oh fuck. And now you're like, okay, let me keep going with this. This is actually working. But most people that haven't formed opt or that have the optimism, I think, I don't know exact steps. Don't get me wrong. The, you know, I might be wrong there. Informed optimism might also be at the end, but in the beginning, Actually, it might be uninformed optimism. So first, you're uninformed. Uninformed optimism. And you just believe that it's going to be easy, but it's not that easy. And then that's where most people give up. So that's the thing. So you just have to keep going. It's even, you know, you said you want to be a millionaire at 21. Bro, there's going to be times. And I've had it for myself. That's, that's why I know it's true. I've had times, literally. I thought becoming rich is just not my destiny. I felt like it's just not meant for me. I've tried so hard. I've tried everything. I've tried reselling shoes. I've tried selling an ebook. I've tried becoming an uh, like a, a fashion influencer. I've tried doing drop shipping. 
I made $18,000, but then I lost all the money. Now I even have a little bit of debt. I have a little bit of credit card debt. I have this friend who did the exact same business. He widely succeeded. Bro, I was at a point literally where I thought, it's just not for me. It should, I, I, just, I thought maybe the universe, God, just said, hey, it's just not for this guy. It's just not for this man. But I kept going, and that's the key point. And you will see it will actually turn around. Absolutely. And this one from the same guy, too. Uh -huh. if, if you're a student, how should you manage university, university work, business work, and sleep? Business work and sleep. Is sleep that necessary for working all night is, is all right. So that's a fantastic question. What's your, ta what's your take on that? Because you, you were in college. That, that's a fantastic question because, you know, I've lived it. I've, I've absolutely lived that part. When it comes to sleep, it might be that you have to sleep a little less. But I still think actually sleep is super important. You guys shouldn't be sacrificing sleep for nothing. But sometimes I've had times where I didn't sleep. I, like there was two weeks. I just I would just sleep maybe like five hours a day and it will destroy your health a little bit. So don't do that if you don't absolutely have to do that. Now, what I what I will tell people is people are actually very unproductive. People waste way more time than they think they do. All those times you're on your phone you're scrolling. All those times, even for me, let's say I was in the calf, just like chit chatting. That's lost time. Every time you're hanging out with your friends, every time that you're not truly doing something productive is usually waste. And people have way more time in a day than you think. And I was doing, you know, track and school and doing my business. And at some point I was still, I was traveling regardless because we have, you know, it was Corona and I took, I took full advantage of the online thing. I took advantage. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't return to school, but I just gave me some bullshit excuse. You know, I could have returned to school, but I just didn't want to travel the world, many high value people. I was still taking my online classes, still working out, still working on business. You have way more time in the day than you think, right? So if it's just school and work, bro, it's easy to combine. Just go to school. What is it from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m.? Do your homework from like, you know, take a lunch break, do your homework from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now you got the entire fucking day to work on your business. You can absolutely do that, you know? So people always pretend like they're busy. No, you're fucking not busy. Like, you, you'll taste real business if you have to do multiple things at the same time. Now, of course, if you have finals and you have to learn, but that's also usually procrastination. You could have just studied before. It's unprofessional, right? Yeah. So... You have way more time in the day than you believe. You just have to be very concise with it and really just be honest with you. Am I being productive or not right now? Am I being productive or not? I'm on my phone. Am I spending two hours on lunch? Fuck that shit. So just just have a plan and, and stick to it and do what you need to do. You, you'll somehow succeed. How, how did he find your mission and purpose? Another great question, actually, because a lot of kids... You know, a lot of young guys, they, they they struggle with, oh, yeah, what's my mission? What's my purpose? You don't find your mission purpose. It finds you. And the reason it finds you is by you trying out a lot of stuff. There might even be businesses that are just not made for you. It's just not your thing. And you try another business, and then you become super successful at it. You know, maybe you have like an investor brain, and it's just like the thing for you, just investing. But maybe you're just a people's guy. So it's just more your thing. You have to find your thing. For example, I used to play soccer. I, it just wasn't for me. I played soccer. I tried my best at it. And I was even good at it. But it's just, it wasn't fun for me. I hated it. It's just team sports. I don't even like team sports. I don't recommend team sports. Like, I, and then I went to track. I was fast in the very beginning. So I loved it. It was amazing for me. So now this was kind of my mission. You know, that was my mission and purpose. To be the fastest guy that I can be. Right? I shot up, like I told you, bro. I tried sh reselling shoes. Just wasn't my thing. I tried drop. I even tried email marketing a little bit. I tried all these things. It just wasn't for me until I found this one thing that I'm good at and I stuck to it. So don't worry about trying to find your mission and find your purpose. What you have to worry about is trying out, trying your best at multiple things. You try your best at one thing. 
And if you're really honest with yourself and you see that it didn't work out as you wanted or it doesn't really fit, then do the next one. For as, I'll give you another example. You know, I studied mathematics and information systems. I didn't end up doing that at the first go. Even now, it's like, oh, shit, what, do I, what, what should I study? I, lit, I studied economics for half a semester, you know. I even studied physics because I thought, oh, yeah, physics is the thing I love because I always loved, I always loved physics as a young kid. But it just okay. it just wasn't for me. I don't know. And then my dad was like, hey, look, just you're good at math, do mathematics, and, you know, just do IT as well. I did that. It was perfect for me. I love math. It, college was easy for me. Literally, all the math exams were always the best. I was always top in my class. I would sometimes go in. I would just learn like two hours before the class, just read through the material real quick and fucking have all the points in the, on the exam. My teacher was like, yo, what the fuck? How's this possible? I'm like, I guess I'm just really smart. He's like, yeah, you are really smart, I guess, if you're doing it like that because you never pay attention in class. But I, I had this one Chinese teacher. I love her, bro. She was such a nice teacher. I love her. And she was like, yo, you never pay attention in class. You don't have a notebook. You know, you're not even really like looking like you pay attention. Sometimes I have to tell you to get off the phone because you know, I'll do business on the phone and shit like that. And I just like come in, baby, sometimes five, 10 minutes late. They'll ask me where were I'm like, oh yeah, I was eating, sorry. And then just like ace the entire class. So, but it's just because it was my talent. Mm -hmm. So you need to find the correct thing. You'll you'll feel it when it just becomes you just you just like it. It's just feeling you have. You'll just like it. How do you keep adding on to things while, while you talk like you were right now? You can't, you can't oh, bring like right now. I mean, it's, it's for me, it, it, it's, skill, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Everything live is a skill because, for example, you said this is your first podcast. Bro, mm -hmm. don't you think like after you've done this a 50, like 50 times, you'll be better at the shit? You know? Yeah. There's levels to the shit. For example, imagine the president of the United States doing a campaign. He's talking for maybe three hours, four hours, just talking, and then he'll go to the next state, next state, just talking, 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 and it's just him talking. It's no one even tell, asking him questions. He's just like talking and being entertaining all throughout. That's also not a skill, but you got to train that shit. Maybe you'll have stage fright. Maybe you'll think that you'll be forgetting something, right? Maybe you'll think, oh, I'm going to look like shit. Maybe it'll be too hot. Maybe it'll be too cold. Maybe the crowd will be overwhelming, but you just train it. Everything, in life, actually, everything in life is training. There's one concept I really want, especially young people, because your brain right now, for example, with you, bro, your brain is very, very plastic. So what does that mean? That means your brain is very flexible. Bro, you can, at this age, you can even, you can literally become anything you want. If you wanted to, bro, you could be the guy who's getting all the bitches, like all the bitches, if you tried that, if you want to be the guy who wants a Lambo, rich as fuck, but in the young 20s, you can be that guy. If you want to be the guy who's an amazing speaker, amazing speaker, you can become that guy. Bro, at your age, your brain is limitless, and, but you can train it. Any skill you want, bro, you have to understand you can train it. Get that idea out of your head that you were born with something. Or be, People always say that. Or that was a big thing. People always say, oh, yeah, he was born being funny. Bro, that's a load of bullshit. I remember when I was young, bro, I made the decision I want to be funny. And I just tried to be funny. And now people always tell me, oh, they always, you know, put the, the, the laughing emoji. They're like, oh, Prince, you cracked me up. The way you sound is so funny. Ha, ha. I'm like, yeah, I guess I just, you know, I just studied funny people. And now I guess I'm a little bit more funny. But you can train it, bro. You can, you can make the conscious decision. I want to be something, and I will train to become that. If you want to train, if you want to be the guy who's getting all the bitches, you can become that. If you want to be the ultra-charismatic guy who everyone listens to because he's so interesting, you can become that. You can train that. If you want to be, you know, I told you, people always say, hey, Prince, you're so stylish. That was a time I wasn't stylish. You can train that. I can now, in the morning, and I get this compliment actually from my friends a lot. They're like, yo, Prince. And, and sometimes it's kind of, I don't know if it's a compliment, but I guess so. They'll be like, yo, Prince, anything you put on, you just look stylish. You know, I don't even know if, it's, if that's a compliment. Like, because I'm like, yo, I put, there's a reason I, I put this on in a certain way, but they don't see the arts, the beauty. 
They just think like, oh yeah, anything I put on is just immediately stylish. But there's a way I put it. There's a reason. There's it's all planned. But uh, it's it's a sense that I developed because I try to be as stylish as I can for many fucking years, many years. And now at this point, I can literally I'll go to my wardrobe. I'm like. Whoop, whoop. And then I come out of super stylish. Easy. But you can do that. Everyone can do that. So always have this mindset. I can train an ability. I can train it. If it's like whatever else you want to be. If it's like you want to be able to speak well. You can actually train that. You can say, and even I do that. I'll, wa- I'll rewatch this video. And I'll look at how many times did I say um? How many times did I say like? Was there any incoherent sentences that I made? What is a better way I can explain something? What is a better way I can make it more funny? What's a better way I can make it more entertaining? I'll rewatch this. And then over time, my speaking abilities will will be better. You can train anything in in, in life, bro. Anything. Um, That's pretty much all the questions that I have and that the guys from the Brotherhood have. Is there... uh, Yeah. um, You... is is there actually let, let me ask you let me ask okay. you so it's it's 2024 right and the world has been changing a little bit i feel like you know basically you're in a in a different decade than me like when i was 14 i was in the 20 it was like 2014 or something like that like we're a decade shifted basically how would you describe how would you describe how you're navigating everything trying to get more bitches you know trying to make more money trying to be a G how are you navigating everything especially not everything's online you got TikTok all this bullshit how does it feel for you how how are all the people in your class in school treating you all that just describe that scenario do people judge you for wanting to be successful no I mean judge I I, I feel like judge is more of a like a negative type of word but yeah. no I I feel like People do want to see me get success. I mean, I do obviously have ears, right? But, <laughs> uh-huh. um, but yeah, you just really gotta ask people because people, if you're looking for a question like me with you right now, I'm I'm straight up asking, right? And with Logan uh-huh. as well, you just gotta, you just gotta find people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it easy? Okay, that's what I mean. Like, is it easy for oh, you yeah, like, yeah. to find peers? Let's say in school, is it easy for you? Is 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 school right now? Are there ambitious people in your school, or, or are they just full of you know, stupid retards that are just trying to follow the crowd and is it like co- completely corrupted? How is it? How is your environment right now? Well, the school I go to, it's a very uh, liberal school. There's uh, a bunch of, yeah, it's it's very uh, gay. There's, there's like a bunch of like... You said there's it's really gay? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of like <laughs> transgenderism okay. and shit like that. So Yeah, that's what I'm I saying. Mean, I didn't have that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a bunch, I mean... The, the people in my school, right, they don't really have the, the motivation the to, exi- yeah, the urge to, I guess you can say, improve themselves and like, start, 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 start at this age. And, yeah. you know, I'm lucky because I, I was always, I always wanted to make things, you know, mm. when I, when I was uh, younger, uh, I would, uh, you know, just edit random pictures of, you know, my brother just put a random, a random, like, uh, add, a, add a random picture on top of the picture, just make it look funny or whatever. And no. I feel like that that really shaped me into uh, my first uh, business, which is uh-huh. uh, JFlow Media. That's what it was called. It was a short form video editing agency. And that that's where I made, that's what really started made, you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for actually helping me out. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um, the, the, I mean, the reason I'm asking you, I think one big difference though right now for you guys, of course, maybe it's like too, super liberal. You got fucking transgenders in your school. Maybe you got teachers trying to brainwash you. You know, you get all that. But one big thing you need to take advantage of is the online communities. Because when I was young, bro, and that's what I see now, 14-year-olds, making money 15 bro i know like i have people in my coach and they're 17 they own rolexes and that's insane at my age the world wasn't that online yet and you didn't have like these online communities that you could join online people 
you're always the average of the five people you hang around the most. And if you don't get that from the people you know in person, you can get that from online communities. You can join online communities. You know, you can even get coachings, mentorings from people. And I think that's a big way nowadays that you can just jump ahead of the curve and actually become successful in your age. If you do everything great, bro, if you do everything correct, if you associate with the correct people, which is now easier than ever before. You know, when I was 14, I was a psychopath. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be great. But there was no one. Like, bro, I literally looked around me. I was like, yo, all these people are fucking stupid. Bro, Dude, I, I, hate yeah. I was borderline aggressive, bro. Like I was, I just even had like a little bit of hate. I was like, bro, these people are just nobodies, brokies. And I just didn't have a way out. It was just, it just pent up, you know? But now you have all these online communities and you can associate with the correct people. And I would take full advantage of that, you know, especially at your age. That's the advice I can give you. Yeah, that's what I really like about the brotherhood. The brotherhood is just a, such a tight, tight community of like-minded individuals, like-minded men. And, you know, I, I was uh, 13 when I joined the brotherhood. I'm, I'm turning 15 in uh, almost in less than a week from now. So... I've, uh -huh. I've been in the brotherhood for like almost a year and a half. So I, my my life has changed a lot because of Logan, you know? And yeah. I, I first heard of Logan through um, Spotify recommendations. And after I first, sit, after I first heard, uh, listened to one of his podcasts, I was hooked, you know? I was like, I let me see if this guy actually has like a Discord or something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, he didn't at the time. Once he released it, I, I joined the first day and a bunch of the guys, it was, it was a free program at the time. A bunch of the guys were just, just kind of childish, right? And yeah. They, because, because it was free, right? So later on, um, throughout the, throughout the year, um, I became an, an admin or a manager through in the discord. Um, yeah. how I got this, cause funny story. I, I started making notes on the podcast for uh -huh. logan i started like yeah. making notes and everything i would put them in the the chat so i was like hey guys if you guys you know just a quicker way to like get the information for the from the podcast and yeah. eric Auden, he's the guy that made the you know eric yep yeah eric he, he's the guy that made the discord so eric decided oh you know what since these guys are giving us you know notes I, I would have to, well, hold on. I, I was, I was continuously like messaging Eric, like, mm -hmm. Hey, can, can you put this out on the announcements for the guys? And I guess you can, I guess he got tired of it. So he just like, Oh, you know what? Let me give him like admin power. So yeah. he doesn't have to keep bugging me. So I, I stayed with the, 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 the admin power or whatever. And yeah, eventually the, uh, brotherhood got, uh, became a paid community. And Logan started to pay me to manage the Discord. So yeah. we kicked a bunch of people out that were one, not being active, or two, not giving giving value. And yeah. uh, just feel as comfortable as you can. But um, you'll see the time. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I I totally, bro. I feel exactly what you feel. You know, I've been in the exact same situation as you. So I can completely one hundred percent relate. You know. So just keep on, just keep on doing your best work, bro. And, uh, but yeah, you don't have to be nervous, bro. You, you, you know, we're homies. So all good, but I understand what you were saying. So basically do you were managing the discord and then you were helping Logan and, you know, he's helped you a lot. He's giving you a lot of value. And then you helped out kick all the people who are not giving value. Like you said, not giving values. That's you, you have to give value. It's nonsense not to give it. You have to give value or else you're going to get kicked, get kicked down. Also with your friends. And that's what I said. If you're hanging out with people who are not your, I mean, who are your friends, but they're not giving you value, especially when you give it, they're not your friends. And you should like kick them out of your life, kick them out of your life. So yeah. Is there more you wanted to say? Because you said, uh, it was that what you wanted to say? It, 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 it's fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, okay. Good. We have ten, like nine minutes left on here. Yeah. It says.
I mean, um, uh, if you say you have all the questions, then uh, I guess well, we can do all... Do you have any questions for me? I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, I just wanted to know your situation, how it is for you. And so I can see how I can best advise you. And like I said, what I would do in your position is give as much value as you can to the correct people, associate with the correct people, right? Try out a bunch of things, a bunch of ways how to make money, and don't associate with the losers in your class in high school that are trying to drag you down. Just be active. You know, one important thing is you should be working out as much as you can. Bro, there's nothing else. You, like, literally, until, from 13 to now, especially when I was, like, from 13 to college, all I did was just train, train. That was all I did. Train, 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 train. Even make money. You don't want to be a dork who's just making money. You need to be as strong as you can. You need to be as capable physically as you can. And this is the perfect age. So, bro, if you're not literally, I would, if I was you, I would just join a competitive sport. For me, it was track. For some people, it might be combat sports. For some other people, it might be literally even tennis. For some people, it might be anything else. But choose an individual sport that you train in, I mean, literally five times a week. Five times a week and you're engaged in competition. Bro, you will see that will change your brain and the way you think about competition. It will make you, it will turn you into an animal. And you just you don't just want to be the dork who's just at the computer and make money. Bro, you're 14. Like you have, your testosterone is still surging. You will see your testosterone will keep surging, surging until you're like 25, 26. And you have unlimited, you'll get, you'll gain unlimited energy. You have to use that energy in order to become more successful. And then also just work on a dating part, you know, try to actually get a girlfriend, try to, you know, talk to girls. I even, I tell a lot of people try cold approach, like go out and talk to girls real life face to face, not just IG and uh, dating apps, I guess, if that's even a thing in your age. But yeah, like just be a fucking man, like try to turn yourself into a man that's physically highly capable, uh, that can actually talk to girls as charismatic. And then, yeah, you can then also start making money. And then you need to associate with the correct people that have all the things that you want or that are like-minded. And then really just try your best. And that's the advice I have for you. That's all I wanted to see your situation, how it is for you right now. And I think the best thing you can do is just, you know, be surrounded by like-minded people, even if it's online. And then, you know, become the best version of yourself. How would you find another like-minded person in in person? Because honestly, like in the kids at high school, yeah. Because honestly, the kids at high school, they're just they're just there doing doing whatever, right? I mean, it's impossible. Um, Nowadays, it's impossible. The way you have to do it is you meet them online, and then once you be talking with them online, you become kind of friends with them online. Then you can maybe meet up with them in real life. But most people nowadays, bro, are fucking losers. All of them. They're all losers. None of them are striving to be better. None of them have high standards. You'll see, bro, at your age, most of the guys, even the cool kids, even the cool kids in your class, bro, they'll they'll be losers very, very soon. After 18, when high school finishes, you know, maybe even after college, after 21. You'll see, bro, they'll 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 fall off. They'll be 23, 24. You'll be like, yo, you were you were a cool kid back then. Bro, you're 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 nothing. You're, you haven't achieved the things you could have achieved in life. That's the main thing. So the key nowadays is to find them online. All right. Well, I think this concludes uh, the first podcast. Um, yeah. Prince Fortunatus. Is it Fortunatus or? Fortunatus, yeah. Fortunatus. Okay. Well, yeah. it was great having you here. Thank you for, you know, Appreciate coming you. and, you know, giving me a check. So yeah. thank you. Absolutely.